got so good people much much love from this side thank you very much for clicking god bless you straight out of africa with some crazy videos creepy videos that you will never see anywhere else apart from here watch till the end and leave your comments tell us where you're watching from much much love let's dive in oh now this is the first video and now what is this red mercury you see you see me put on a banana like this today's videos are hot what this is it this is the real deal now oh oh my god what is this now this is a big decker oh you see when i was a kid i wished i could have such a toy oh oh this is very big huh and it's remote controlled oh man this looks like my kid drive dream this is so great you see you must are very intelligent Hmm. Who created this thing? Oh, who came up with this idea? Oh, what can it do? It's a transformer! Wow! Now this is the ultimate kid dream. Man, this is so incredible. I love this. Oh, what do you think about that? Oh my god. Oh, good. The curiosity. Oh, this is so great, man. I just love this. Oh, ah, see, this is very beautiful. Ah, man, you see, animals and human beings, they are just, they just relate in an awesome way, which shows us how nature is great and amazing. If you can just connect with animals without speaking or anything like that, and just good vibes, and they feel our emotions, it's so great, man. That's why we should be spreading emotions of love and forgiveness and peace out there to the community. What do you think? Because that should change the community. If you feel the other person is just vibrating love and cares for you the way you do for yourself, wouldn't that be good? What do you think about it? Good vibes only. Much love to you guys, man. Oh, this baby is just good vibes. And the cheetah or the leopard, it's just good vibes. Just all things, just good vibes. Ah, much love to you guys. Oh, this is so great. Ah. And you see some guys have been saying, oh, it's big shout, give shout out to them. Shout out to you. But they, if you want to be shouted out properly. Oh, this is so great. This animal, look at this animal. Is cheating with just these good vibes, huh? And he's wondering what's happening to the baby. No, oh, man. You see, this is just so nice. He's trying to reach to the baby and touch it, and he's wondering why can't I reach it? Oh, I think sometimes they should just let these things free. What do you think? Because you live with them freely. My friend owns a cheater, it does good work. Another one, a donkey, the one I was telling you about. That guy, the way that donkey serves us, you cannot imagine. You see, this stuff, they are not as bad as these people sometimes put it to be and they lock them in cages. Do you think this animal really enjoy to live in, uh, in uh, somewhere where it is controlled space? I don't think so. But good vibes to you, much love. Hmm. There's someone that was saying we give shout out to them. They say they are from England and is a good person that has been watching called uh, Mr. Marty B. Big up to you. Know what the is? You see, I dress like Father Jerry, Father Gabe, Father Scott, the other priests. But I wear a funny hat. And I have a cross here and I have a ring on and I have over here a staff. Here, bring that over to me. I'm going to let you in on a secret that maybe not a lot of people know. Why do you think a bishop carries a staff? Anybody know? Nice and loud. Because I'm the leader, because I'm the shepherd. Right? Just like Jesus, the good shepherd. And when shepherds do their work, they usually carry a staff to help them to lead 
the sheep. And so this is a symbol of that. And that's why when I say Mass in every parish, I always bring this staff. And how about this hat? Do you know what this is? Why does he wear it? Why do I wear it? Not because I'm a conehead. <laughs> yes. Yes, you. Nice and loud. Because why? Because I'm the bishop. That's true, but you know what the bishop is? The bishop is the governor of the church in an area. And a bishop gets appointed by the Pope. Pope Benedict appointed me a number of years ago, about 10 years ago. And he asked me to come here to your diocese, to the Diocese of Trenton, and to serve you as the governor of the church. And this is called a mitre. The staff is called a crozier. And if you notice, I'll take it off for a minute. This is a mitre, and the mitre comes from, it looks like a fish, doesn't it? Baby shark. <laughs> the mitre comes from a Greek word, and it means crown. And you wear that because you're the governor of the area. And if you notice this hat, this funny looking hat, it points to heaven. And it points to heaven with two, two parts. One of these represents or is a symbol that Jesus is God. One of these is a symbol that Jesus was also a human being, just like you and me. And it's in one hat that the symbol of Jesus as God and man come together because Jesus was both God and both man, and you know that from your studies. But there's more. You see these flaps? They drive me crazy because many times they fall in front of me. But these flaps have a meaning too. The Old Testament, the Old Testament of the Bible, and the New Testament of the Bible, the Gospels and all the special readings that we hear every Sunday. So the bishop wears this crown, which symbolizes God and man in one hat with the Old and New Testament as one word of God. And so isn't that interesting? There's all kinds of symbols. There's always symbols in the church. The bishop wears a ring. And he wears the ring just like your mom and dads wear a ring. They wear a ring because they're married to one another. And the Pope gives me this ring because he wants me to be married to the church, to the church of the Diocese of Trenton. And he gives me this cross to wear around my neck because he wants the cross of Christ always to be close to my heart as I lead you as your shepherd. So I didn't want you to get away without a little lesson today about the bishop. And the bishop is the one who is the successor of the apostles. Jesus surrounded himself with 12 apostles, and at the Last Supper, he not only made the Eucharist, his body and blood, but he also made the priesthood. And he gave the priesthood to the church to keep his body and blood coming to be able to be shared with the people. And among the priests, as the church grew, some of them had to be leaders. And some of those apostles were leaders all over the world after the time of Jesus. And every year since the time of Jesus, bishops were made to continue the work of the apostles. And that's why the bishop is called the successor to the apostles. So just in case anybody wonder why is all the big fuss about the bishop, that's the reason, because the bishop is the successor to the apostles. He's the shepherd of God's people, and he's the one that the Holy Father, our Pope, has asked to serve you and all the people of the Diocese of Trenton. And that's something that makes me very happy, and in a special way, to be with young people. Because you know what? You're not the church of the future. You're the church right now. And the church doesn't just belong to us old guys. The church belongs to you. You are the church today. That is very interesting. Huh. Huh.
Yo, was that a movie or was that real life? Oh, I don't, I don't know, man. But uh, you can tell me in the comment section. Anyway, these videos are for entertainment purposes and uh, to see how different people live in the different parts of the world. What do you say? You say there's that video about the bishops talking about his heart and something like that. You see, there's an episode that we saw and someone had a different school of thoughts about the heart. Oh, if you saw it, please, can you comment on it? Much love to you and good vibes. Watch till the end and hit the like button. The super thanks. You are loved. You are wonderful. So, watch till the end. Hmm. Oh my God. What is this now? Oh, whoa. This looks like... Uh... We've just gone through a massive timeline jump and what made it possible was the leaders of the timeline. And I want to explain to you who they are because you might recognize yourself unknowingly right in there amidst the timeline leaders. Do you know who they were? They were the people that began to lead their own lives from the front. They were the people who said, I'm not going to wait for somebody else to be the change. I'm going to be the change. I'm not going to wait for somebody to heal me. I'm going to heal me. I'm not going to wait for the answers. I'm going to go into life blindly, not knowing what I'm doing. Because when I wait for the answers, it slows me down. I'm just going to do it anyway. I'm going to trust myself. And from the trust in myself, it's going to echo and ripple and reverberate into trusting that life will lead me to the right people and places. The timeline leaders were the ones who dared to not wait. And it was because of people leading themselves that their frequency shifted. And when enough people shift their frequency collectively, it leads to a collective timeline jump. And that's exactly what we've just navigated. Our next step, guys, lightworkers, spiritual warriors, prepare yourselves. Our next step is to support the people who are still trapped in the lower timeline to shift into the higher timeline. We're going to do that by doing exactly what we've just done, some more lead ourselves, personal responsibility, stepping out of blame, higher levels of abundance, out of self-sacrifice, into self-honoring, higher frequency all the way. My name's Kerry Kay, and I'm going to be sharing a whole lot more with you, so follow for more. Oh, that was in Slovakia. It's rain, Papa. It's rain. Come on, you live outside, you numpty. It's just a little bit of rain. <laughs> Come on, Merlin. <laughs> God, Papi. Come on, good boy. Oh, do you think the horse knows something that we don't? If oh. I show you, if I show you that Jesus Christ was hanged, the Bible mentioned that he was hanged on a tree. He said, okay, if you show me, I will believe from today that the, there are many contradictions in the Bible, and I will no more have that strong belief in the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Please, any Christian can help me. Open Act of Apostles, chapter 10. The book of Act of Apostles, chapter 10, verse 39. And let's read that shock. We have me to read it, ma. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I have it here. Yes. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him 
on a cross. Hmm. Forty, uh, or hanging on again, but God raised him from the dead on the third day, and they caused him. They they killed and him, they, and they caused him to be seen. Verse thirty nine. Which version is that? Yeah, do you that's King, thirty nine. Do you have King, at, uh, uh -huh. uh -huh. Do you have KJV, King James version? Okay. KJV. Okay. KJV. Okay. Yeah. I have KJV here now. And we we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land and in Jews and mm -hmm. in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. whom they slay and they hang on a tree. Whom the kid and hanged on a tree. I showed him this particular verse. He said, wow, he has never come across the Oh my God, what do you think of all that story Never now? Lower your prices to win a client. It devalues your best clients who happily pay in full, and it rewards bad clients who will leave for someone cheaper. Just before you fall asleep, right at that point where you haven't fallen asleep, but you could, right there, if you can stay relaxed in your heart, while you stay awake in your brain, you can make some really dramatic changes because you move into this theta brainwave pattern, and that tends to be when the door between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind is wide open. So you could actually rewrite a program. When you have no analytical mind, you're suggestible to information. And what is suggestibility? Your ability to accept it, believe it, to surrender to it as if it's the truth without analyzing it and that's what actually programs the autonomic nervous system so we teach people how to regulate their brain states so that they can reprogram oh yeah yeah Ooh. oh my god now this looks like a hack let's see this is a life hack you see these humans that share these hugs are amazing humans that just want to share a piece of information out there to educate people you see, this is so good. It was uploaded oh. to Reddit by user Volbag with little information other than the scene was captured on a deer camera somewhere in Tennessee. The image captured at 6.31 p.m. shows two figures making their way through the wilderness. The closest one to the large tree appears to be carrying a backpack. However, it's the other figure that stirred up debate in the comments section. It's been suggested that it resembles the spirit of a Native American, one who seems to be following the hiker. This is the answer that nobody wants to hear. Listen. What is the secret to a successful marriage? Some of you listeners are like, oh, come on, don't say this. I'm like, it's not cliche, it's true. If you can pull off love and Jesus more than your spouse, you got a chance. All marriages are fail in divorce, or you end up living together as glorified roommates. That fire goes out. So you gotta do a few things. One is tap into the source where love actually comes from. That's Jesus. It also allows you to have a reference point. So both of you, as you grow closer to Jesus, According to a biblical model, you are getting closer to each other as you move toward that similar point. Otherwise, you, hey, you're not the same dude that you were 10 years ago. Do you have any chance that you're going to be the same dude you are now in 10 years? No. No, you're going to be different. When me and my wife got married, the best piece of advice that we heard from dozens of people was this. The only game that you should play in your marriage is first one to the cross wins. Humility wins. Keeping Jesus at the center of your marriage it's the key to success. If you want to learn how to follow him, click follow or subscribe.
What is LIDAR? Uh, light imaging and detective ra radar. They bounce mm. laser beams down into the jungle. Ah. There's a whole pattern of them. You need helicopters, and they, they, but it doesn't damage the rainforest. Mm. And you can strip away and see what's, see what's there. If, if this isn't too much of a diversion, let me give you the example of uh, Guatemala. Guatemala is a small country, if I remember correctly. It's not much more than 100,000 square kilometers in size. It is filled with intriguing Mayan ruins. Uh, everybody has heard of uh, Tikal. Mm -hmm. What archaeologists didn't know was that literally within walking distance of Tikal, surrounding that whole area were more than 60,000 structures that they hadn't identified. And these have all been identified by LIDAR in a country that's just 100,000 kilometers in area. So you have to ask yourself, in that five and a half million square kilometers of the Amazon, if LIDAR technology could be applied comprehensively, what would we find beneath there? And the evidence already is extremely tempting. Ever since I found out Bill Gates owns majority of a farmland in America. Okay, first of all, fruits naturally have wax on them. As for Bill Gates owning most of the farmland in America, he doesn't. He is the biggest land shareholder. That means he, as a single person, owns more land than any other single other person. However, that land is still a fraction of the total amount of farmland in America, less than 1%. So the vast majority of produce on the market aren't related to Bill Gates at all. Also, Bill Gates didn't go out and buy a bunch of farmland because he wanted to make poisonous fruit. His investment team bought it. Not Bill Gates, his investment team bought it because it was a good investment. Half the things people attribute to Bill Gates, Bill Gates doesn't even have a hand in. It's his investment team investing in things to make him money, and they're really good at it. Um, actually, Bill Gates is a bad person. You shouldn't be defending him. I'm not. I'm telling you how investing works. I've been washing my produce a little extra lately because I don't trust it. So what I do is vinegar, filtered water, and baking soda. And look at that, it bubbles up. Vinegar and baking soda bubbles up. You don't say. Any video like this that ever combines vinegar and baking soda together in order to wash something, you can instantly disregard. When you mix baking soda and vinegar, they neutralize each other and turn into water, carbon dioxide, and sodium acetate. You are cleaning your stuff with water with added water. When you wash it, some of that wax that's naturally on it is going to come off into the water. Oh, you see, there is always a lot of information in these videos. And you can always go and research and find out if it's true or not. And by the way, if you have watched up to this far, much love and respect to you. You are loved. May God bless you for watching up to this moment. You see that alone is a good gesture of love. That the universe will reward you by making all your wishes and dreams come.